live from Kessler Field on the Stransky Complex of Canisius High School. I'm Stu Boyer along with Paul Catrona. Francis Beck is our producer. Joe Turry and BJ Stack are photographers. At halftime, Francis Beck and Joe Krause will have a halftime show. And today, Paul, we have one of the great rivalries in the country, St. Joe's against Canisius. This, this game has some great history. Great history, Stu. 99 games. Not bad, right? Or this will be the 99th game. Almost as many games as you and me, our ages combined. I knew you were going to say something <laughs> about that. Well, a, a couple of years ago, Canisius put a 66 nothing beat down on St. Joe's, which I believe was Mike Corona's first year as the, the Marauders head coach. Now, I'm probably Number ignoring four, last Jamie year going Clark. back two years, but something Number tells six, me that's a little bit fresher in some minds than you might think. Oh, I think uh, it's not only on the minds of alumni, it's on the minds of every player that was here. And I think it's on the mind of Coach Corona. Um, we had a good chat with both coaches. Both coaches very confident in their, in their players and their staffs. It's gonna be an interesting game. Um, a lot of pride on the line here, Stu. As you can see, the coin toss is underway at midfield. Canisius in the gold pants, gold helmets, blue jerseys. Canisius wins the toss. They will defer, so they will not get the ball. The Marauders will get the ball. The Marauders in those gray uniforms with the maroon helmets and the maroon numerals. The stands on both sides are packed and there are people lining the fences pretty much all around the field. Well, not quite all around the field, but down certainly to the goal line to our left. So a huge crowd, packed student section, and a great day for a football uh, game. Absolutely. The atmosphere here is, is just electric. I look down to the right. You see the student section to our right, just below us for Canisius across. Parallel to the boys from Canisius are the boys from St. Joe's each with their flags and their colors flying. The St. Joe's boys Saint did a march coming in. The, the Canisius kids Canisius did something in the grandstands. It was just, just a wonderful atmosphere. This is what makes high school football so much fun. So St. Joe's will get the ball to start the game here. I think you just mentioned this is the first game in Western New York for Canisius. St. Joe's is two and one. Canisius has lost all three. And this will be really interesting. The Crusaders have already lost three key players to injuries. Nizel Lash, Dyrell Howard Dolson, and Damari Yancey are all out with injuries. And those are three pretty key performers that Coach Craig Krasanski will have to find a way to replace. And of course, one of the best stories in Western New York is freshman running back Elijah Kimball, who's had a fantastic season so far. So, Canisius is getting set to kick off. Colokia, Dominico Colokia set to kick off. And back deep for the Marauders. Gio Panapinto. On the far side and on the near side. Well, let's see if I can. And that's number four, Breon Campbell Jr. So Panapinto and Campbell Jr. getting ready to receive the opening kickoff as we're just about underway. It's two, somewhere in the distant past, I played with a Panapinto from Kenmore in, in high school, Little Leagues in high school, and you know, He's probably either a grandson or a nephew of the of the Panapinto I played. So that's a very, very common name down over in the Kenmore, New York area. Well, the ball is blown off the tee, so Colloquial will put it back on there. And the wind blew it off, and now we'll get set to kick it off. Panapinto and Campbell Jr. ready to go. And we are underway. High end over end kick. Taken by Campbell Jr. 15, 20, 
and spun down inside the 25 yard line. I caught that on the run and had some speed going, but they closed that hole pretty quickly. It'll be first and 10 for St. Joe's at their own. Let's see exactly where they spot that. Well, Stu, I'm thinking to myself, true to football, the, the, the play to reach see, uh, for the receiving team was bring it left. They, they, uh, Canisius kicks it left. Campbell goes all the way over. As you said, a good head of steam, but a nice tackle to bring him down. Ryan Muchika is the quarterback. And he will hand it off. And behind the line of scrimmage, Panapinto lost a couple of yards. He'll bring up second down. Bring up second down for the Marauders. Down oh, under throw. center, the and it's a short down. run. Short gain there, bring up third down. Looked like he kept it himself. Quick count, quarterback, quarterback sneak really, or we'd call it a sneak, but it's really just quarterback up the middle. Looking at, looking at Joe's formation offensively, we've seen so many spread offenses. Joe's is playing a little more conservative, tight end, double wide receivers. Uh, up to this play. They're hitting the line of scrimmage and they're snapping it quick. Shotgun snap. Little flip to the running back on the far side and he's brought down on the far side, close to the first down. We'll see where they spot that one. It look, looks like a first down. Great effort at the end to finish off that play, diving forward, gotten that extra yard. The St. Jones running back, forced out of bounds. Well, after the uh, they're going to call that fourth down? Yes, I, I guess from, line, from, a week, from our vantage point, we didn't see. He stepped out of bounds a little bit early on that. So Jack Eskridge back deep to receive the punt Jaden Clark, for Canisius. Excuse me, that's Jaden Clark. St. Joe's will punt it away. Three and out for them. Kick is up and away. Clark will catch it. He somehow he stayed in bounds, cuts to the near side. Beats one tackler, there's a flag. So most likely this is coming back. Clark still on his feet and shoves, still on his feet, still going. He's gonna go all the way for the touchdown, but there's a flag, all, three flags at the 41, 39, and 36 yard line. So. Jaden Clark with a great return. He caught it on the far side, managed to stay in bounds. Came all the way across the field, tiptoed down the sidelines. And unfortunately for Clark and the Crusaders, it's all for naught. All for naught, and we did see that flag very early. Evidently, somebody, you know, sometimes on special teams, you're trying to reach to get that block. Players are moving at top speed. Missed the block, hit him in the back. But what a great yeah. turn, right? Yeah, that was exciting. That was a highlight reel. I mean, once he once he turned the corner, he had one man to beat, beat that man, and he was just gone. And unfortunately for Canisius, play never happened. When we talk about it many times about penalties, um, are the bane to the coaches. They practice all week, make sure you don't do this, but sometimes physics are what physics are. The player turned, you got him on the back. First and 10 for the Crusaders at their own 27 yard line. And we got one of the officials, it looks like Canisius is just taking a timeout. Craig Krasanski wants to talk things over. 10 20 to play, first quarter scoreless, St. Joe's and Canisius. You're watching the NFHS Network. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, 
More information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. First and 10, Canisius, their first possession. Handoff to the near side. Kim, he's got some running room, cutting down the sidelines. His Estridge, and he's at the 20, the 10, cuts back inside, still on his feet, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. A 73-yard touchdown run for Jack Estridge. And the Crusade a six to nothing lead. Well, how about that? They have a 60 some yard punt return for a touchdown called back in the first play from scrimmage. They come around to the same side of the field and get a 73 yard touchdown run. Maybe it was set up that way. They wanted it that, that longer run at the end. Well, in any case, it was a great handoff. Around the, around the edge, I was just thinking, watching the linemen, so many times we don't mention them enough. They just sealed everybody. There was a wall of Canisius linemen. Great run, finished it off with a nice cut in to get the six points. Kick is up by Colloquia and good, and just like that, the Crusaders lead it seven to nothing. 10.06 to play in the first quarter. You're watching Monsignor Martin High School Football on Western New York Athletics. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Stay up to date on the latest scores across Western New York by visiting WNYAthletics.com and use our interactive scoreboard for the latest across Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Association. So for the second time, Colucchio will kick off for Canisius, Panapinto, and Campbell Jr. are the deep men. Some early excitement for the Crusaders here. <laughs> well, it was just, just a devastating run, really. Just great... Great uh, technique, great formation. We were talking, it looked almost like a little old fashioned pro set. They had two backs. They did have the tight end nowadays split a little bit. Um, and as I said though, the outside tackle, the left tackle uh, in the guard just made a wall. And then the old fashioned Packer sweep. <laughs> Colloquia bounces that one, taken by one of the up men at the 35, still on his feet at the 40, and brought out to about the 45 yard line. Gavin Donovan picked that ball up and ran it back about 10 or 15 yards. It'll be first and 10 St. Joe's. The Marauders second possession. First one, they went three and out. Good, good field position though, after, after giving up a long touchdown. Something positive, a good pickup by, the, by a front man getting a good spot to start their drive off here, Stu. Mutica, the quarterback. That is the pronunciation that Coach Mike Corona gave us. And that's what we're going with. Back to pass, he throws to the near side, incomplete, the flags come out, and that is pass interference or holding or a face mask. Definitely a penalty, I believe, on Canisius. I think it's going to go the other way, Stu. I, I meant St. Joe's. I meant Daniel Muchica, the twin brother of the quarterback, Ryan. And that was clearly some kind of interference nope. or holding. Or definitely a, definitely a, a hold of some sort. I'm just looking at the flag, uh, the U.S. flag down at the one end zone where, where uh, Joe's is going to. And we were down on the field. And though the flag is calm, when you're on that field, there is a strong wind that they're throwing into. I um, mean, we saw that ball just get hung up in, in the wind. Well, that penalty is on St. Joe's, so that'll, or then that one, Canisius will accept the penalty and back the Marauders up. So but I'm assuming passing going in that direction. Maybe we'll see something a little lower, a little lower trajectories. You're gonna have to cut that wind. So first and 25 for St. Joe's all the way back at their own 30 yard line. And 
And there's the handoff, and not a lot of running room there for Panapinto. And it'll bring up second down. Caduceus setting set their defensive line. Sometimes it looks like a three, three, five, but the last few, uh, the last few snaps, they've been putting five men on that line of scrimmage. They are determined to stop the run. So it'll bring up second down. No gain on that last play. So it's second and 25. And now they're in a four-man front, so they're 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 giving St. Joe's a lot to think about. There's the handoff, and getting around the corner is Panapinto, and he's out to about the 46-yard line. Good run there. He's got a good burst. He burst through there quickly, gain of about 15. He'll bring up third down, about third and 10. What I loved about that run too, Stu, as soon as he broke the line of scrimmage plane, he ran for open, you know, he ran for green. He ran for open space. Run to where you can see with nobody else. Picked up half of that penalty yardage. Third and ten's a lot more manageable than what they were just in. Now, play action. The pass is a little overthrown, incomplete, intended for Martin Kruger, and that'll bring up fourth down. You know, going back to that run by Panapinto, there was a second there when I thought he might have had an awful lot more green space if he could, he yes. was just like a, a eyelash short of getting down that yes, side Yes, I thought line. the same thing, and I, the Canisius defensive back, I didn't catch his number, but made a tremendous uh, angle. He, he attacked it with such a good angle. Um, he caught him because I thought exactly the same. We might be watching a <laughs> replay of the other wrong run. Well, here's Jaden Clark to return the punt. He's not unlikely to get the chance. The ball bounces and is down by St. Joe's at the Canisius 30-yard line. So they were not going to give Jaden Clark another opportunity to return that one. No, no. So Sa seven, safer punt. Yes, much safer. Seven to nothing, Canisius. They. Crusaders, by the way, have run just one play from scrimmage. A 73-yard touchdown run by Jack Eskridge. You couldn't really design an opening <laughs> opening quarter uh, for such a big game, rivalry game, any better for the Canisius side. Zimmerman at quarterback. And there's the handoff to Kimball. And he's got about four or five yards. Yeah, one of the officials takes a spill. By the way, that reminds me, I didn't mention the officials for today's game. Paul Gagliardi, the referee. Craig Donnelly, David Michael, Dave Sobis, and Michael Chattel round out the officiating crew. Bring up a second down and five. Stu, you know how I'd like um, colorful swag yeah. on players. I'm looking at Kimball's. Uh, cleats. He's got those little red uh, things on the back, but he's got these bright pink gloves and a bright pink belt. Looking awfully, awfully stylish. And here's Kimball with the football. He breaks a couple of tackles, cuts to the outside, comes down the sidelines and shoved out of bounds at about the St. Joe's 48 yard line. How did he get out of all that trouble? They had him dead to rights in the backfield and he spun his way out of it. You know, um, you've heard me say many times, go to a game, any game, anywhere. Find the kid you can't keep your eyes off of. I just watched a young man. You're right, he stopped. Great play by the defensive front. He does a little bunny hop thing back and just goes to his left, cuts it back up, a huge gain. He's a kid, I'm definitely gonna be watching this entire game. Well, Coach Krasinski told us before the game he's the best he's ever coached. That's saying something. Hand off to Kimball, comes to the near side. Grad, what a great defensive play. By Dorian Buckley of St. Joe's, he grabbed them and said, you know, I think I've seen enough of you running for the moment. I'm gonna spin you out of bounds. You're exactly right. He said, I heard Catrota say something about your swag and I'm gonna show you who's got more swag. That was a great defensive play. A six yard loss, so it's second and 16. 
for the Crusaders back at their own 48 yard line. Zimmerman barks out the play to his teammates. Takes the shotgun snap, back to pass. Steps up, throws, he got hit on the arm, it's intercepted, picked off by St. Joe's, and it's Dorian Buckley taking it all the way back to the Canisius 42 yard line. Zimmerman I think Zimmer must have gotten hit, he stepped away from one man, he got hit as he threw it, and the ball hung up there. Yes, he definitely got hit in his chest just as he's trying to release the ball, popped right up and, and um, Number three, Dorian Buckley. You know, he's making his, his presence known in this game so far. Well, whoever's picking players of the game, he's got an early leg up on it, along with Eskridge. And Clark had it till those flags came out. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. We talk about that dirty laundry every game. First and 10 for the Marauders. They're at the Canisius 42-yard line. Muchica awaits the shotgun snap. Back to pass, he throws, intercepted. Picked off by the Crusaders. Kyrie Wilkinson takes it all the way back to the St. Joe's 40 yard line. Back to back, to back. interceptions, there's a flag on the play, so let's see if the interception stands. So back to back interceptions, we think. So the, the, the interception will stand, penalty on Canisius. I was just <coughs> thinking something about number nine today, right? Interception number nine, St. Joe's. Interception number nine, Canisius. <laughs> so shout out to the Beatles for anybody our age about number nine. Number nine. Oh, it was number three. So well, sorry. it's a multiple of nine. Okay, you know, you're Close right. Close enough. Eh? Ah, thanks for saving me on my <laughs> poor Beatles joke. But you know what? Beautiful, beautiful interception. Notice uh, uh, Canisius' defense. They, they know they're, the wind is strong, and they are cramping up. Or they are just pushing up on the line of scrimmage on Joe's. Short pass behind the line to Eskridge. He makes three or four moves, and he's buried by a host of tacklers so at about the Crusaders' 30-yard line. A little short pass there. They're trying to get him into space, but the Marauders said not this time. It'll be interesting to see how Canisius handles the wind that wind when they're going in that direction. Because as I said, uh, the Canisius defense, they're, they're within 10 y yards of the line of scrimmage with one deep safety, about 15. So now it's second down and 13 for the Crusaders after the three yard loss. Zimmerman goes under center. Rolls to the right, throws, caught on the far side. He's got a first down and then some. And there's another flag on the play. I didn't see what the flag was for, did you? I did not see it, but it, I don't want to I don't want to speculate, but it was right in the area where 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 um, that play was uh, connected with the receiver, so could have been a push off or a hold. Well, let's see which way it goes. No, it's a false start on the Crusaders. Mm -hmm. so illegal formation. Or, or an illegal formation, call it what you will, the play is coming back. That's a five yard penalty from the previous yeah, I'm surprised that they didn't stop the play. Don't they usually stop um, the play? What I think, what I think is um, one of the receivers weren't up on the line of scrimmage. So they allowed the snap to go. That's why, okay, that makes more sense. That's why they threw it right at that spot. So the Crusaders back a little deeper in their own end of the field. There's a handoff to Kimball. He's got nowhere to go. <laughs> that looked like your number nine, Michael O'Grady. He was yeah. in. He was in on the tackle there. Yeah, I think a number 24 also for St. Joe's. Guerrero. Yeah, Guerrero. And you know that's my howdy doody tackle so far of the game. He just put his helmet directly into his chest, pushed him back, and landed on him. 
In the old days, that was a good NFL tackle. Now <laughs> it's usually a penalty for some reason. But you hit at least, him too hard. Yeah, you hit him too hard. At least in high school, they still let the defenders uh, tackle hard. Third and 22, they've got to get at you about the 44-yard line. You got a whistle and a timeout taken by Canisius. We'll take a timeout too. Five minutes exactly left in the first quarter. Crusaders seven, Marauders nothing. You're watching Monsignor Martin football on Western New York Athletics. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. We're back at Kessler Field, part of the Stransky Complex here at Canisius High School. They opened up a gorgeous new baseball diamond this year. I had the opportunity with Tom Prince to do one of the Georgetown Cup playoff games, which was a lot of fun. Third and long here for the Crusaders. They lead it seven to nothing. Here's Zimmerman back to pass. He's got time this time. He throws deep down the near sideline, intercepted, picked off by Panapinto. Panapinto at the 40. There's two flags out already. Panapinto spins away from a tackler and then gets walloped at the 30 yard line. There are two flags actually. One probably for an illegal block in the back on the return, and I'm not sure what the other one might be. Might be for the same thing. That's two passes picked off today by Zimmerman. Just interesting, you know, I was thinking about the um, the timeout where I thought it might have been, okay, guys, look, it's a long distance. Let's just no turnover, hand it off, safe throw, something of that nature. First but all, true to his offensive nature, we know Coach K likes the, he's the inventor of never punting <laughs> way back when in his Will South days. I think he saw an opportunity um, to try to try to make that long play. However, safety, staying in position, didn't take any fake to the left. It's a tough throw. Um, and what you had just said, black in the back. So Joe's with the turnover, but they also have to move it back a little bit. So St. Joe's has the ball at their own 37 yard line. They've had three interceptions in this game. Two by St. Joe's, one by Canisius. But as we've seen in high school football, there seems to be some disdain about punting. They teams like to go for that fourth down play. There's a handoff to Panapinto, and he tries to spin away, but he can't. He's tossed back by a, a bunch of players. Hunter Jancy. Hunter Jancy. Son of Eric Jancy, former North Tonawanda head coach. So it's second and 10 from the 37 yard line. Jancy and Mason Allnut. Mason Allnut is the son of the UB athletic director, Mark Allnut, both on the Canisius squad. Second and 10, no gain on that last play. And Muchico rolls to the far side. He throws down the far sideline, incomplete, intended for his twin brother, Mutica's Daniel Muchico. We'll bring up third down. This time facing a five-man front. Joe's decides to askew the run with a nice little, nice little uh, pass out uh, to the outer, outer, outer area to the left, but. Again, I just think the wind is picking that ball up and just carrying it. Well, that'll work for St. Joe's in the first quarter. Canisius might wonder how they have two intercepted. By the way, that's a great word, askew. Askew, I, like it. I looked Very it up. Good. What's the word of the day, askew? <laughs> Muchica gets the snap under pressure. It's a screen pass. It's caught, but Canisius defends it. Nice, a oh, ball's out. Was he down? The ball comes out. I think they're gonna say he was down, but let's see. He's down. The ball did come out, but he was down. The ball will stay with St. Joe's. Mucus green passes complete for a short 
And that'll bring up fourth down. So now Jaden Clark goes back to return this punt. Good play, good play call there. When you when you have a team really putting a lot of pressure on, try try a screen, try a draw. Um, good play, but then the linebackers for Canisius, they read it, they diagnosed it, they brought him down for the fourth fourth down. Jaden Clark electrified the crowd with his first punt return, and that will take a bounce at the 30. It'll roll. Clark will not get his hands on that one. It's downed at the Canisius 25-yard line. 3.04 to play first quarter. Canisius 7, St. Joe's nothing. You're watching Monsignor Martin Football on Western New York Athletics. Hi, Deion Dawkins, Dawson Knox for Team West Tour Used Cars. With the largest selection in New York State, with thousands available. From economy cars to this outrageous Ford F-150 Raptor. Owned by a well-known celebrity type. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this my old truck? Are you selling my truck? Much better. Check it out. Win Josh's truck. Go to westherd.com and win your choice of Josh Allen's signed Ford F-150 or $100,000. Ride with Team West Herb. We're back here, first and 10 Crusaders. We've had three back-to-back. -back. We've had three interceptions here in the quarter and one touchdown. Handoff to Kimball, cuts to the outside, and he can't beat number 20. Elijah Kimball! That wasn't number 20. Steps out of bounds. Yes, it was. Peyton Brock made a nice play there on the tackle to prevent Kimball from turning that corner and heading down the sideline. So second down. So Stu, we were just discussing how the interceptions the play, haven't four, really, Crusaders. really turned in any points. Not yet. Not yet, right? But, but as I said to you, they're playing with dynamite. Both teams have to settle down, try to stop those turnovers. Zimmerman goes under center, hand it off. There's no no room to run there. Hunter Jancy on the pullback Jancy drive. on the carry, and he just had no now room. The second he got the ball, he got buried under an avalanche of gray jerseys. Yeah, number 49, Dylan uh, Capone for St. Joe's. Great, great uh, off the ball. Got a great jump. Plugged that hole up very nicely. So third down here, third and about four or five. It's a six-yard gain on the first down play. <laughs> Zimmerman in the backfield with Kimball. Kimball's easy to spot with the the pink. I guess you'd pink gloves, I guess. And look at Zimmerman. He's got nice blue shoes. You like that swag. I, I was going to mention it. Here's Zimmerman looks to pass. He's got time. He's going to tuck it and run it, but he'll get out of bounds, and I think he's short of the first down. Um, tried to get out of bounds. Tried to, tried to get the first down, but... He Official looked like he went way well short of the first the down. And it'll bring up fourth down. And as you mentioned, Coach Krasanski is not a coach who likes to punt a lot. So he likes to es es <laughs> eschew the, the punting. Very good. But yeah. we saw that very um, many years ago at South. And that was the trend in college. Spread go for it on fourth down. So he was one of the pioneers in this area that started that, and he's continuing here in Canisius. Let's see if they just, no, they do snap the ball. They hand it to Kimball, and it looks like he's got the first down, and then he's wrestled Elijah down at about the 40-yard line. Five-yard five gain and a first down for Canisius. In the high praise for Kimball, so what I've noticed so far, tremendous outside speed. It just It's obvious he's got the speed. He's been getting some tough yards in between the tackles. That's a great sign for a running back. As we know, um, you, you, you earn your bones by, by hitting those defenders in, in, in between the tackles. When that starts happening, that end will start opening up. He's a freshman, 5'11", 180 pounds. And, and Zimmerman is in trouble and sacked, brought down by Michael O'Grady. And he'll bring up second down. O'Grady burst through there, and Zimmerman tried to spin away, but his knee went down, and it's a sack. 
about an eight yard loss. As we've talked about before, uh, as opposed to pro football, but the same in college. One knee down, play ends. Now Josh Allen <laughs> keeps running. Well, hopefully we don't see him run a lot because the other guys are doing so well. How's that, that? I would take that any day. Second down for the Crusaders. Zimmerman throws to the far side. It's caught but tackled immediately. And it looks like there's even a loss on that side. pass is complete. I believe it was Michael O'Grady again. Yeah, there's a flag on that play too, apparently. Yeah, there's the flag right there at about the 28 yard line. 22 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Been, a, been an interesting quarter, a lot of back and forth, just one touchdown. Unsportsmanlike, yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct, conduct on St. Joe's. Joe's and that, I believe, will get them a first down. I didn't see anything that looked like unsportsmanlike conduct. Must have been maybe right before or after the tackle. You probably could tell by my eyes rolling. <laughs> yes, I didn't really see anything that... Egregious? Yeah, That's my word. I like that egregious. Yeah, thank you. Um, however, however, we're not down there. It could have been, it could have been something uh, that we just couldn't see. It could have been something that somebody said, too. Right? Yes, and that's exactly what I think might have happened. And now we have officials waving their arms. Was there a timeout taken? Doesn't look like it. So, Stu, the... F the um, Maybe they got the spot wrong? Well, the unsportsmanlike, I thought, would have been an automatic first. But it's not, it's a third down, okay. But they're, they're, I thought it was a personal foul. Right. But obviously, uh, obviously we were wrong on that. I think we were applying the NFL rule. Here's Zimmerman to pass. He's got time. He throws deep downfield. He's got his man. And it's a Canisius touchdown. That looks like Jask Eckstridge again, his second touchdown of the day. And it's 13 to nothing on the 55 yard connection with Eskridge, who simply beat his man. He beat his man. We saw his speed on the punt, on the return. Now we saw his speed as a wide receiver and a beautifully del delivered ball on point. I was watching the safety because I thought he might get over and, um, and, and deflect it or make some type of play. Ball was just thrown over his head, the, the cornerback's head. It was just a gorgeous, gorgeous throw. Colloquia adds the extra point, and it's 14 0 Canisius with just five seconds to go in the first half. 14 0 Crusaders. Beautifully thrown ball. You really couldn't ask for a better throw. Yeah, I'm watching, you know, I'm just watching the whole play develop. The quarterback with such, he had time. You know, we got to mention those big boys up front. They did their job there. And he had so much time, and he just stepped into it so nicely. Released it at the high point, and really, that ball had a good loft on it. We saw a couple earlier that were just underthrown. Uh, no mistake there. So, Colloquia will kick off. Panapinto and Campbell will be the deep men once again for St. Joe's. So, that's two gigantic plays that have hurt the Marauders. 73-yard touchdown run and a long touchdown pass there. So, um, you know, Stuart, I was just thinking that exact point because Joe's defense has been playing down-to-down. Uh, -down. Very, very good football. Gives up a big run, gives up a big throw. So those chunk yardage plays um, have, hurt, have hurt Joe's. I want to remind everybody coming up at halftime, Francis Beck and Joe Krause will have a halftime show here from Kessler Field, part of the Stransky Complex here in West Seneca. This will be the last play of the first quarter. End over end kick caught by Campbell. And coming to the near side and he's brought down at about the 21-yard line, and that should do it for the first quarter. That was actually...
Pat Pinto on the return. And that brings the first quarter to a close. After one quarter, Canisius 14, St. Joe's nothing. You're watching Monsignor Martin football on Western New York Athletics. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Stay up to date on the latest scores across Western New York by visiting wnyathletics.com and use our interactive scoreboard for the latest across Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Association events. Western New York High School football is on WBFO, your NPR station. Hear play-by-play -play coverage every Friday night at 7. Listen live at 88.7 FM, WBFO.org, or the WBFO app. A complete schedule of the eight-game season is available on WBFO.org. Friday Night Lights is made possible by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union and Miracle Method. Second quarter, St. Joe's will have the ball, the the trailing quarter, 14 to nothing. And they shift into the shotgun formation. Muchika takes the snap, comes to the near side, and he gets about four yards maybe before he's sent to the ground. Stuart, we were talking about the kickoff. No we noticed a little flip play back over to Pinapanto. And I noticed, um, I was just watching the, the, um, the kickoff team players stayed in formation. There was, nobody got sucked over to the right. So good special teams play for, for Canisius, pins Joe's down. And then here we see Joe's break out into a spread. They've got the wind. They're gonna tot, nope, the little quarterback draw instead. And a quick snap of the ball. And we got a lot of whistles. And there's a flag on the far side. So it's a false start against St. Joe's. Paul Gagliardo in the white hat said so. And it'll back him up five yards. So it'll be second and 14 for the Marauders who have been unable to really get any kind of sustained offense going here. This is a credit to the Canisius defense. And there's the handoff and no room to run. Nolan Klein handed that off. I believe to Panapinto and he got buried underneath an avalanche of Crusaders cat, uh, tacklers. And exactly what you said though. Uh, I've noticed Canisius' front, they've gone from three to four to five players. Well, how, whatever number of players they put up on that defensive line, they have had their day so far against the St. Joe's offensive line. Nuchika back in at quarterback. Looks like he just changed the play again. The Crusaders defensive front shifts. And he takes the shotgun snap. He throws to the near side. Incomplete. Intended for O'Grady. And that'll bring up fourth down. There's been some issue, and particularly on this drive, with the center quarterback while he's in while he's in shotgun, getting that ball to him cleanly. Uh, Muchuka had no time. That, ball, that snap was a little off. He had to get that ball and get rid of it. Canisius, a lot of pressure on him. But you know, when that snap's cleaner, that gives you the extra half a second to set yourself and really and just get rid of the ball on pace. Jaden Clark back to receive the punt. He's standing at the St. Joe's 48 yard line. A little bit of a high snap and he's gonna run with it. Now he gets the kick away. 
It'll bounce at the 40 and go out of bounds at about the opposite 48 yard line. So. Loved it actually. What's that? I love the play actually. He, he was, you know, the punter's running. If, he's, if he sees the, uh, if he sees daylight, he's going. You're down 14 nothing to your rival. It's in the second quarter. Offense just needs a, a shot in the arm. And I don't know if it looks a little Australian kind of punting. We've <laughs> noticed, we've seen it here today, and the drop of the ball and such. So running to the right, he's a right-footed right -footed kicker. I thought, hey, you're going to test the waters. That's a, that's a smart thing to do. Mateo Molinaro for St. Joe's, number 25. Punting has changed since I was a yeah, young man. Yeah, a lot of things have changed, right? Here's Kanisha's first and 10. And here's the handoff to Kimball. He's got some running room. Kimball, touchdown Canisius. No flags, make it 20 to nothing. What a great run. What and a great once run. he gets into space, nobody's gonna catch him. No, just, just burst through the hole. That hole was big enough. You or I could run <laughs> through it. Uh, probably not with that speed, but what a great run. Uh, gets to the second level and he's got a second and probably a third gear. He just pulled away from everybody. And he got to that level fast too. He I, got to I, that level fast. And he was, he's like that Maserati that goes from zero to 60 yes, in, in yes. the blink of an eye. And you know for folks at home who are watching a little earlier, they were having a little trouble, you know, pushing the ball from the middle, but they kept hitting it, kept hitting it. I had mentioned, I think it's a great idea because if you want to get around the edge. There's a flag on the extra point. Which I didn't see a signal if it was good or not, but the flag did come out. And there's also a boy personal, down. Personal, oh, it's a clip or a chop block. And a player is down, you're right. That's against St. Joe's. And it looks like it's a Canisius player. So to my point about the running back, you continually want to run up the middle, keep hitting, keep hitting. And on that play, great hole, great run. Yeah, oh, terrific. And what, he's exciting. Yeah. Let's face it, he, he's exciting. And I cannot see who the Canisius player is. The extra point was good, and it's 21 to nothing. Looks like they're stretching out the Canisius player at about the 19 yard. Well, you and I, in the games we've done, we've seen a lot of players getting stretched out yes. for cramping. Yes. And you know, I have my opinion on that, that I think up in well, Western second, New York. Coach Krasinski's not happy about something, and he's letting these officials know it. Now go ahead. Sorry, it, up in Western New York, we, we limit the practice days in August and really rush these players to games. Happy to see he's up. Chavez Caldwell, number 56. As you were saying. Um, yeah, so in any case, so I, well, I, we've seen so much cramping of players this year, and we've seen it in multiple sports. Maybe that could be something they want to look at and try to extend maybe another extra week. I just think that... The boys and the girls in, in girls sports, we've seen it in girls sports also. There's a rush to get to the to start the season, but there's not a lot of preparatory time in my opinion. 10 practices, um, really not enough. Well, I'm not gonna argue with you, but you know, New York State has made a lot of changes over the years, and in some sports they lost some games. Yes. And I don't see them getting to all of it back. No, but I'm looking at player safety. Yes. Um, Which you would think would be their first priority. And you could do things, uh, you know, like for contact sports or any kind of sport, really. Um, limit the contact, limit how much time they could practice, but give these kids a little more time to get used to these uh, surfaces that they're playing on. It's a little different than grass. It takes a little bit more energy out of your legs. And uh, maybe that might have something to do. I'm sure the sports... Uh, medicine part, I'm sure they're drinking tons of fluids, but we've just seen so many of these uh, athletes go down and they're being stretched and stretched and stretched. Well, Canisius will kick off from the St. Joe's 45 yard line because of the penalty. 
21 to nothing Canisius here with 10.01 to go in the second quarter. And the boys are jumping up and down. I feel it, the vibration where we are. Uh, the Canisius boys over to our right, they're very, very excited right now. Kind of quiet over on the far side on the St. Joe's side. As Colloquia gets set to kick it off. Gets his leg into it, end over end, into the end zone for the touchback. So the penalty allows Canisius to kick it into the end zone for the touchback. It'll be first and 10 for the Marauders. It really pins St. Joe's back. So if you're on the St. Joe's side, you really just are trying to get some continuity to your offense. Um, I remember when the Bills were playoff game against Houston many years ago, the great comeback, and Steve Tasker said at some, one point, they got together and they said, look, just win this one play. And right now, I think this is what uh, Joe's has to do. Win this play. Don't worry about the outcome. Win this play and then start trying to build some continuity here. Kanisha shows blitz. Looks like they were coming. At least it did momentarily. And now Mutica back to pass. Throws to the near side. Incomplete. Mutica's pass is incomplete. Intended for O'Grady. A late flag on the play. Let's see what this one is. It's in the area where they might have roughed the quarterback. Let's see. Personal foul. It's a personal foul and that Kinesius. against Canisius. I was watching the ball and I didn't see Bobby, the quarterback Bobby, get hit if that's what it was. I believe you're right and it, you can tell there's no Canisius players trying to just, hey, wait, no, I didn't, you know, they, it happened, they understood it. Um, they were getting ready for this next play. It'll move the ball out to the 35 yard line. And you might have noticed Joe's um, four wide out. So they're trying, they're trying to you, you know, take the advantage of the win now. First down, at their own 35 yard line. Nuchika looks like he's changing the play. Back to pass from the shotgun snap. He throws deep down the middle, and it's caught. And at the 35-yard line of Canisius, it's O'Grady getting up with the ball. Nice catch by O'Grady. Hung up there just a little bit. Just a tad, a little more, little more underneath it, and he might have been still running to the end zone. But as I mentioned before, win one play. Now they've won two plays. Try, you know, Joe's is just trying to just get those first downs. I noticed also um, Canisius, all in man, four, four, four wide out, four cornerback type players, safety, no safeties deep there. So I guess they, that means he trusts a lot of his guys. He trusts them, yes. There's the handoff to Panapinto. Trying to get around the right side. He's got a good first down gain, about six or seven yards. He'll bring up second down. The St. Joe's crowd waiting to erupt once the Marauders can get some points. They're, they're kind of anxious. They're moving around a little bit more. The boys over there, you see the hands waving. Um, something else I was listening to Steve Tasker talked about uh, this past week. Um, in games when you jump out ahead, it's tougher on the defense to maintain that, that focus. So right now, Canisius has to get refocused. Joe's is doing a good job now getting positive yards. Hand off to Panapinto, and he breaks through there. That's a really good run. He's got a first down. He's inside the 35-yard line. Looked like he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. He kept those legs moving and got a first down. Good run. Good run. I think it was John Winner. Um, oops, nope, wrong. Wrong, wrong young man. Uh, Keyshawn Dees, I think, hit him. But in any case, Panapinto took that hit and just kept drive going ahead, get those legs churning. So it's first and 10 for the Marauders. They'll hand it off to Panapinto one more time. And he's got another four or five yards. Three. Good hole there, and he made a nice adjustment three. cutting into the hole. Second down and seven. Make it second and seven. So Panapinto getting the bulk of the carries on this drive, kind of the workhorse on this one. 
Yep, and we talk about running backs. A lot of a lot of running backs just like to get that ball multiple times throughout the drive. They want to get their ry rhythm going. It looks like Panapeno's getting into that rhythm that, that we talk about with uh, with runners. Second down for the Marauders. They trail 21 to nothing. There's the handoff to Panapinto one more time. He's got a couple of yards. He's short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. But once again, he got he got some positive yardage there. Positive yardage um, was being held. Again, I always talk about those running backs. You just got to keep moving your legs. He did it at the end. He dove for a couple extra. And now interesting, though, Joe's earlier was spreading it out. There, everybody in tight. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't uh, trying to look fancy. They were saying, we're going to power football over you. Canisius, pretty good stop, pretty good, you know, pretty good defense there. Forced into a third down play. Third down for the Marauders inside the Canisius 30-yard line. They've run the ball, except for the one big pass play on this drive. Now Muchica back to pass. He's in trouble. Hunter Jancy hits him, and the pass falls incomplete. Hunter Jancy came flying in there and disrupted that play to bring up a fourth down. Yeah, he, he you know, he guessed, uh, I don't know if you really guessed or you have a good feel for the snap count. He, he ran immediately, great pass rush. Half a second away from probably getting that sack. Bring up fourth down, the Marauders will go for it here. Hannah Pinto goes into the slot on the far side. Campbell splits out wide on the near side. And I think Canisius just had a, or a St. Joe's had a false start. And that'll back him up five false yards. Make it about Joe's. fourth and eight or nine. Back up and takes the ball back to the 33 yard line. You hear the Canisius crowd saying, you can't do that. For the St. Joe's standpoint, though, that one hurts. Yes, it did. You know, took it out of a manageable third down to a long or a fourth down play. Mutica back to pass. He throws to the near sideline. Intercepted. Picked off. Amir Hernandez picks that one off. He out jumped O'Grady for the ball. O'Grady's slow to get up. And he picked it off. Turnover on downs. Well, actually, to the interception and a turnover on downs for Canisius. Nice play by Amir Hernandez. Great, great interception. Got position inside O'Grady. Um, sometimes we forget, uh, you know, O'Grady is kind of leaning forward, trying to now play defensive back. Hits that turf pretty hard. Um, just watching him come back. And so he's now again a player that I think is going to be stretched out. Um, he gave everything he had, but that that surface it's a little little harder than uh, natural grass. And it's not a carpet. It's not a carpet. It's not your it's not your carpet. Uh, what, was, what was the popular? Oh, shag. Carpets, yeah, I was just going to say it's not shag carpet. Anymore. Yeah, remember those days? Yes, I do. I don't know what they were thinking. We'll take a break. Five six nineteen to play second quarter. Canisius twenty one, St. Joe's nothing. You're watching Monsignor Martin Football on Western New York Athletics. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Stay up to date on the latest scores across Western New York by visiting wnyathletics.com and use our interactive scoreboard for the latest across. First and 10 for Canisius. They'll hand that one off to Kimball. Breaks a couple of tackles, got about four yards. Good run there. Uh, Lackawanna leading Springville, 28 to nothing in the fourth quarter. 
The Crusaders getting the ball back after the Hernandez interception. It was fourth down, but he picked it off. Nice play there. Bring up second down at about eight after the short run by Kimball. And Canisius up by three touchdowns. The Crusaders have used the big plays to get some touchdowns. Get to some touchdowns, stop Joe's a couple of times. I'm just thinking really both sides of the ball, their lines are dominating. Back to pass, Zimmerman, he's got a man wide open. It's Kevon Walker still on his feet at the 40, at the 30, the ball comes out. He somehow picked it up and he flips it to a teammate and it's Crusaders ball at about the 12 yard line of St. Joe's. Kevon Walker was flying down there. Here's the replay and the ball's knocked out of there. He picked it, bounced right back to him. He picked it up and flipped it to Jaden Clark and it's first and 10. What a play. Walker got a little lucky there. Well, you know, I, I was just thinking to myself when things are going right, yeah. they go right. Not only, not only did he get the uh, ball tomahawked out of his hand, picks it back up and probably Coach K, go, okay, just settle, you know. And as he's getting tackled, he flips it again. Holy cow. He was fortunate that Jaden Clark was there. Sure-handed Jaden Clark. Zimmerman takes the snap, hands it off to Kimball. Kimball tries to turn that corner, still on his feet. Touchdown, Canisius. Simple off tackle, untouched. And that'll make it 27 to nothing. As we take a look at this replay right here, as Paul is correct, he's untouched. Nice run there by Kimball. And suddenly this one's getting out of hand for the Marauders. Love what Kimball does is, you know, he's, he's going to his left. One step, he squares for straight up, and he sees the end zone. He sees nobody there. And to your point, poof, second gear. He's in there very quickly. Kick is up and good, and it's 28 to nothing. Kimball has two touchdowns. That touchdown set up by the big play to Kevon Walker who had a great catch and run, and somehow Walker found himself wide open between the 40 and the 50 yard line, and Zimmerman did not miss. So it's a 28 to nothing lead with just over five minutes to play in the second quarter Take, for Kenesis. Taking nothing from Walker. I think it's the, um, the old adage, busted uh, coverage. Somebody passed him through thinking there was a safety behind them because there was nobody from St. Joe's within 10 yards of him. And I think it might have been Michael Vision who caught up to him, or it was uh, Breon Campbell who knocked the ball out of, out of uh, Walker's hands. But boy, what a bounce came right back to him. That was the kind of play St. Joe's needed, and, and yes. they needed it to bounce the other way. Yes, and sometimes, as I said, when it's going right for you, it's just going right. We blame the uh, football gods, the soccer gods, the baseball gods, <laughs> whatever. When it, when it rains, it pours, yes. right? Yes. Well, Canisius is having themselves a day. I think the last time you and I were here for a St. Joe's Canisius game, it was 66 to nothing, Canisius. So 20, that's 88, and that's 96 to nothing. Either field. we're good luck for Canisius or bad luck for St. Joe's. <laughs> I'm not sure which. If we're affecting this game in any way, uh, I'd be very surprised. But, you know, the facts are the facts. Yeah, that's right. Can't argue with numbers. So Colloquia will kick it off. Dana Pinto and Campbell Jr. are back deep. End over end kick. Comes to the near side. And Panapinto takes it out to about the 37 or 38 yard line. Good return there. Where it'll be first and 10 St. Joe's. The Marauders now desperately looking to get something going on offense. They had a nice drive last time, but turned it over again. And I'll just reiterate, win this play for Joe's. Right, do it one That's play That's all time. you can do. You can only control what you can control. I know those are old adages, but they're very true. You can't get so high for the Canisius side. 
that you think it's going to be a cakewalk and you can't get so low for the Joe side that the game is already over. First and 10 Crusaders, or uh, Marauders at their own 36 yard line. And they will hand it off to Panapinto. He's got some room to run at the 40 and out to about the 47 or 48 Panapinto yard line three. of the Marauders. Jaden Clark. Clark on the tackle. Great example, Panapinto. Nice running back, by the way. First time I've seen him in person. But just gets around the edge, um, off tackle, runs to the sideline diagonally. He's running for he's running to daylight and he picked up that first down. And again, that's the kind of positive plays. He didn't he didn't try to do anything fancy, he just did a really nice solid run. Good for him. You could just see he's a football player. First and ten Marauders from their own forty seven yard line. I want to remind everybody at halftime, Francis Beck and Joe Krause will have our halftime entertainment. I never knew you guys were a song and dance team. And there's the handoff, and it's Panapinto one more time down to about the Canisius 46 yard line. Another good run. Another good run, and by the way, they open up with Let Us Entertain You. <laughs> and they will during halftime. It's Francis Beck and Joe Krause. Can I throw out a, a shout out for Will South? Women's soccer? Well, why not? We both have a connection to the program. Okay. You a little more direct than me. Well, they Will South, uh, nice game today. 4 nothing win at home on Alumni Weekend. And we mention that because Paul's youngest daughter, Carissima, is the Will South head coach. First year and having the girls, they're on a, they're on a good roll. They're having a good season. Most of all, they're having a good time. Second down and 10. And uh, less than 10, excuse me. Mutica hands that one off to Panapinto. And that time, Kanisha said, that's ah, a little bit too much yardage you've been taking from us and stop him for no gain. They're much in the defensive linemen. You know, those are those big guys that look like they're just smashing into the other big guys. But their feet, great feet, uh, footwork. Uh, Panapinto comes left. Kanisha is right. Stop suddenly, reverses ground, goes the opposite direction. I'm watching the two interior tackles mimicked that move. They're much bigger people, but just as quick. And to your point, they said, okay, enough, enough. We gotta, we gotta stop this here. Third down and five for the Marauders. Musica. Quick throw to the far side, caught but tackled immediately. Great defensive play, sniffing that one out. The pass was caught on the far side and tackled immediately was Yuchika, the other, the other quote unquote other twin brother, I believe made the catch. And I, mean, I didn't see you stepped up and whacked him, but that, that was a great defensive play. Takes him all the way back to the 50 yard line. So it's fourth and seven for the Marauders. And I don't know how you feel when you see that, but man, my heart just beats a little quicker. My feet, I got a little movement on my feet. I'm on my toes. I love to see defensive uh, contact. Uh, that was a clean hit. Um, the Joe's, Joe's receiver really kind of stretched out, but clean hit, great play. And the punt, Jaden Clark might get a chance to return this one. He catches it at the 10. Comes to the near saw, that could be a block in the back, but no no flag, now there's a flag comes out, and Clark will take it out to about the 32 yard line. Uh, to your point about big defensive plays, I love a big hit in football. It's a big it's, part of the game. Fun, Unfortunately, right? I think in certain leagues they have um, tried to legislate it out. Yes, uh, I think that, big, that certain league is the NFL nowadays. That's the one, yes. But I just love to see I see a you know a defender lay a good lick on the off offensive player, and once in a while, by the way, running backs, they lay their own lick yes, on the defenders do. too. <laughs> That's just as good. Uh, we were both watching the official uh, on that. I think they called black uh, block in the back on the return. I think he was reaching for the flag, but he couldn't gra oh, he didn't grab. Is it that the what first took time. it so long to come yes, out? Yes, because then he he found it and then. 
Uh, you know what I'd want to do? I want to go down the field and take all their flags <laughs> and hide them. Uh, don't say that. You'll get me in trouble with a lot of these guys. Well, I know they're all nice guys. I just want to, you know. You would like to see the teams play penalty-free football. Well, of course. That's and you know what? The, re way. the real way is they're only reacting to what they're seeing. That's right. Unfortunately for officials, they, they, you know, they, they take the, uh, the bulk of the criticism. Yes. But we're only doing it in good nature. True. And Zimmerman goes back to pass. He's got time. He throws deep down the middle of the field, and it's caught all the way out to the 44-yard line, Kevon Walker. Excuse me, that's Jaden Clark. Excuse me. He was tackled immediately, but it's another huge gain. I'll tell you what, Kanisha's not afraid to throw from deep in their end zone, and they've given Zimmerman plenty of time to throw the last two balls. Pretending if you have a guy like Jaden Clark, I'm watching him. The ball is a little caught up in the air. He's turning. He's a tremendous athlete. He's actually turning, taking steps backward, getting those hands way high, getting up in the air and bringing it down. It was a fabulous catch. And now they hand it off to Kimball, and he cuts around two men. What a move. Down the sideline he goes, and he, he breaks the tackle. He spins out of the tackle, but he goes out of bounds at about the 27 or 28-yard line. What a fantastic run. Uh, if the fans at home would have seen me when he made that cut, my hands went up and over the top of my head like, oh, my. <laughs> that was <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's so fun to watch. Well, go back to what you said earlier, the one guy you can't take your eye off of, and it's him. Yeah, you know, when you see, if, you, if you're like us, you might go to a place called YouTube, and you'll <laughs> just want to see what other high school kids are doing outside of the Western York area. Once in a while, you'll see a young Deion Sanders. So it's, if you'd watch him, very similar. I'm not saying he's a Deion Sanders yet, but he's got some great speed and great moves. Zimmerman's a pass. He throws toward Jaden Clark, and he caught it. What a catch. Great adjustment turning around by Clark, and it's a first down for Canisius inside the 10-yard line. And oh, again? got an injured Crusaders player. Uh -oh. But you were about to say. I was just going to say Clark turns, sees the ball, is a little underthrown. I think it was number 30 for St. Joe's. Who was on the coverage, got great coverage. Nope, it wasn't a 30, but great coverage, really. Um, and Clark just reaches over the top of him while he, he jumps in the air and grabs it out of midair. Kind of, kind of who, who did that for the Bills the other, for the interception? Milano's interception. No, Milano, yeah, he just took the ball away from him. You know, where you jump over a yes. player and just bring it back up. Then the athletic ability, get the ball into the chest because you're going to hit backwards. Great, great catch. Nice throw. Yes. Just a little under throw. We have a Crusaders player down. Being looks like he's being stretched out at about the 39-yard line. 59 seconds to go in the half. 28 to nothing, Canisius. You're watching Monsignor Martin football. I'll tell you what, we'll keep it right here. He's up. I thought it was going to take a little more time, but he is up. And... We're getting ready to go. Number 62 for Canisius, Patrick Enright will slowly walk back toward the Canisius sideline. It's first and goal to go for the Crusaders, who would like nothing more than to put another one here in the end zone. And by the way, Canisius gets the ball to start the second half. And Patrick, 6'5", 290, <laughs> tackle, I'm, you know, just, he just looks like a, ta he looks like a tackle, a football player. Big, big boy. From the seven yard line, first and goal. Zimmerman throws. And Clark takes it down to it about the one yard line on the completion there. Zimmerman gets up to the line of scrimmage and they spike it to stop the clock with 38 seconds remaining here in the half. And we got a lot of substitutions going on here including the quarterback being taken out interesting you know Zimmerman to Clark boy this this whole drive you could have just kept saying that almost every play <laughs> and when you're hot you're hot well, let's see this looks di directs now that's Kevon Walker under center it's a quarterback sneak 
and I thought I saw a flag. I don't see any signals. I did see a flag. That might be either an illegal formation or an illegal procedure. Let's see what they call that one. So Brett, number 18, Brett uh, Pettit had the ball. He had the ball, he's still holding on to it, and uh, his helmet was taken off. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it or if the penalty occurred beforehand. Now, did, did Pettit carry that ball? Yeah, 18 took the snap. Oh, yeah. it was 18 taking the snap. All right, I thought it was number one. I thought it was Walker, obviously yeah, I think not. it was a direct snap. Uh, we have to see this on uh, replay. I'd love to see where Walker uh, uh, lined up. Because that ball was directly snapped to him, to uh, Pettit. So let's see what this penalty is. It's on Canisius. So the helmet thing didn't didn't uh, didn't really matter. A false start on Canisius. Take him back to about the six yard line. Here's Zimmerman back to pass under pressure. He throws and it's incomplete Zimmerman off the hands of Walker. And he was he was fortunate that there was not a Marauders player there. That would have been an easy interception. Easy pick play. Um, I was just thinking to myself, that is the quarterback's uh, worst enemy <laughs> is when a receiver will get his hands on it. But it, if it, enough that he doesn't quite get it and the ball pops up. Sometimes it's bad if he gets his hands on it, drops it. Bad, bad enough, but those pop-ups can lead to easy turnovers. Why they do all those tip drills, right? Yep. F fourth and goal for the Crusaders. And Zimmerman fakes the handoff. Rolls to the right, he's in trouble. Still on the move, he throws. He caught it for the touchdown! What a catch and throw! That looked like Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs. Great catch and throw. Evan Dean on the reception. What a catch, what a throw. What a great play by Zimmerman to buy time. Yes, he was, look, he, he was looking for a little wheel route uh, to his left, um, well covered. Just started sprinting to the right and they had, they had People stacked, uh, Canisius, and he hits that. That's a that's a great throw on the run. Still. And the extra point is good. And with 28 seconds to go in the first half, it's Canisius all over St. Joe's, 35 to nothing. What a play! What a play! And you know that looked like the hand Zimmerman. Like I said, that looks like Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs. Or the play against Miami last year to James Cook just before yes. halftime. Yes, you know, but that that's a recognition that who I wanted to throw it to. Nope, that that plays over. Quickly decides to go to the right. What I liked about the play is uh, Zimmerman knew if the wheel routes covered, he had three receivers to this right, so he immediately decides, okay, I got to get out of here, hightail it. Makes a little bend, move so, so that you know the avoids the pass rush and all of that. But then having to start running towards the line of scrimmage in the end zone, he's either gonna run it in, he knows he's too far out to do it, and then just slinging the ball while he's running on point. That's a tough throw for a quarterback, but he did it, did it wonderfully. 35 to nothing, Canisius, and I guess one of the tough things for a coach in a game like this is to Keep his team involved and interested, and not yes. get too discouraged. Because my immediately, my immediate thought after that touchdown throw was like, for instance, if you're fighting a vampire and you took the stake and put it through his heart, that had to hurt St. Joe's, and that's going to be something they got to talk about at halftime to come out here and just keep, keep playing. And the kickoff is picked up by. Number 21, George Coons. And the pile moves out to beyond the 40 yard line. So they bounced the kickoff. He picked it up and made a good play, good play there to get it out to about the 41 yard line. And, and Coons being a junior, he recognizes the moment, right? He was, he's not gonna just, you know, fall on the ball or something. He said, no guys, watch. 
I'm not giving up, you don't give up. And that was a beautiful return. And at the end, that was mano v mano. And he was not going to fall down very easily. So it's first and 10 for the Marauders at their own 40 yard line. Let's see what they can come up with here. Not much has gone right for St. Joe's. There's the handoff to Panapinto. He's got some room to run. And he gets about eight or nine yards, took another big hit at about the 50 yard line. So Panapinto getting plenty of yards on the ground, but St. Joe's not doing much else, much else. And that'll do it for halftime. We want to remind everybody to join Francis Beck and Joe Krause for the halftime show. At halftime, Canisius 35, St. Joe's nothing. You're watching the Monsignor Martin Football Association on Western New York Athletics. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Hi, Deion Dawkins, Dawson Knox for Team West Tour Used Cars. With the largest selection in New York State, with thousands available. From economy cars to this outrageous Ford F-150 Raptor. Owned by a well-known celebrity type. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this my old truck? Are you selling my truck? Much better. Check it out. Win Josh's truck. Go to Wester.com and win your choice of Josh Allen's signed Ford F-150 or $100,000. Ride with Team Wester. You're watching another live stream production by 300 Level Media, LLC. 300 Level Media can highlight your business by incorporating commercials, live reads, and corporate logos throughout our WNY Athletics events. WNY Athletics is the premier high school sports streaming service in New York State. Covering regular season contests through the state championships and everything in between with over a million views annually. If you are interested in advertising with any of our platforms, please visit our Become a Sponsor page at WNYAthletics.com. 300 Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, the Utes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you say this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. We don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For more information, visit www.paulwolfagency.com. Stay up to date on the latest scores across Western New York by visiting WNYAthletics.com and use our interactive scoreboard for the latest across Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Association events. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more.
name is Lisa Roosevelt, owner of the Rose Byron Grill, located at 199 Scott Street, downtown Buffalo, in the heart of the city. It's a great place, friendly atmosphere, have great drinks, have great food, and we have awesome customers. If you come to the Rose, I guarantee you, you're coming back. Western New York High School football is on WBFO, your NPR station. Hear play-by-play -play coverage every Friday night at 7. Listen live at 88.7 FM, WBFO.org, or the WBFO app. A complete schedule of the eight-game season is available on WBFO.org. Friday Night Lights is made possible by our members and by Great Erie Federal Credit Union and Miracle Method. Welcome back to the Stransky Complex at, at West Seneca for Canisius High School. The Crusaders lead St. Joe's 35 to nothing in the 99th rendition of this game at the half. I'm Francis Beck, joined by Joe Krause. As we're going to go talk a little bit about this game and then get into what else is happening in Western New York, week four of the high school football season before we get into all that. But, Joe, why don't you go through what we saw in that first half? Yeah, Francis, 99th edition of the game going all the way back to 1921, back with Charlie Chaplin brought the folks to movie theaters, but Canisius Jack Eskridge starting things off with a 73-yard scamper, uh, taking it to the house for a 7-0 lead. Then Vincent Zimmerman finding Eskridge for a 55-yard touchdown pass, already 14 to nothing out of the first quarter. Then the second quarter, Crusaders came to go with another touchdown run from 45 yards out, another score, this time coming from, we'll say 10 yards out just before the half, 449 to go, and then 23 seconds left. Vincent Zimmerman to a Pendleton resident, Evan Dean, a former start point uh, product, a 10 yard touchdown pass, so 35 to nothing, our score. Francis Canisius dominating all fronts, especially in the running game. Eskridge already with over 100 yards rushing and just dominating. But it was a slow start, I would say. Both teams with a couple interceptions each early on before Canisius was able to break away a couple of three and out opportunities as well. But Canisius, they came in. They have a chance to try to tie this all-time series for the first time since 1987. They've had those pieces around Zimmerman, Eskridge especially, um, but a good start for Canisius, but there's a lot of football left to be played if you're on the Marauder side right now. Yeah, and I, I think it all starts with the performance. Uh, uh, you know, for St. Joe's, you got to get back in this game. you got to figure out what's going on offense. Their defense actually isn't, hasn't been that bad despite giving up 35 points. A lot of those, as you mentioned, were a lot of long plays. We saw first play from scrimmage uh, for Canisius went for six. And they have a couple of draw, you know, long touchdown runs, but Canisius hasn't really been able to sustain too many drives. So the defense has been strong. They have a couple interceptions, but the offense really hasn't been able to get too many plays going. I think the longest play was about a 30-yard pass from Muchika to, I think, Michael Grady, the receiver in that one. And I think their second longest play was that roughing the passer call. So it really, the offense is struggling, which is kind of what we've seen really from both teams all year. Kimball, I think, uh, my memory serves me right, averaging about 100 yards a game, and that was against teams from Ohio, teams from Pennsylvania. So it shows you how much 
uh, how strong this Canisius running game is. Yeah, and for Canisius as well, the big play in the second quarter, Kevin Walker had a 65-yard touchdown catch from Zimmerman. He bobbled it, and then Walker picks it up for another 10 yards rushing, and then he pitches it back to Jaden Clark. I mean, that's something that we're not going to see every day. And and, and I agree, you know, it's, it's a 35 nothing lead, but you take away a couple of those big plays, and this is going to be a, a lot closer. Yeah, and I think, yeah, that's what it comes down to. 35 nothing. I, I don't know if Coach Corona and staff really have a, there's no, there's no 35-point play, as they say, uh, but, you know, I think there's little things they can do to try to at least uh, get some points in this, on the board and uh, bring this up to more, a little more respectable score, I should say. Uh, get a little closer in that second half. Uh, but, Joe, turning to the rest of Western New York, you were at Riverside last night for a big tilt uh, between McKinley and Lockport. Yeah, that's right. McKinley with a comeback win against the Lions, 26-21. to McKinley... They lost, two weeks ago, as we all know, the game against Bennett was called off at halftime. They lost big. They responded a big 40-16 uh, win against Niagara Weefield. They go into Lockport. They were trailing 14-6 at halftime, but 20 points in the second half against the Lions. Brandon Liggins with a game-winning three-yard score with 247 left to play. And McKinley, they said this was a really big game for us heading in. And on the flip side for Lockport, second straight uh, week where you lose by less than 10 points. Last week they tried to come back against Clarence down by 16. This week they had the big lead and they lose it. But Lockport, 1-3. But I would say they're a tough cookie in the matchup. Uh, they have a big game coming up against Grand Island in a couple weeks, Friday, October 13th. Um, so Lockport, they're still in. There's a slim chance, but they're going to give it a big fight. Um, I think another big game that we saw both last night, Francis Lancaster, Orchard Park, Lancaster holding on. I know some people said Orchard Park, they're a little dinged up, but that's a solid win for the Legends down the stretch, 21 to 17. I think there were a couple others as well. Yeah, we had a, a bunch of close games last night. Um, you, you had West Seneca, or um, Clarence got a convincing win over West Seneca West, 27 to 7. And then uh, in a big B clash, you had Health Sciences pick up the 26 to 18 win over Pioneer, our, we, our guys were there. Tom Prince said Pioneer had a chance to tie it, but dropped the receiver dropped a uh, touchdown in the end zone that would have at least given them the opportunity for two point conversion to tie it. So that was a close game. Um, some other results: Ken Maurice getting the win, 40 to 19, over Cheek Dewaga. Um, trying to see pulling some up some others. Uh, Williams Lee's 25 to 18. Uh, close one at All High Stadium, South Park, 26 to 20 over Williamsville South. I'm told the Sparks had a lead in that one, and and South almost came back and beat that one. In fact, Stu and Paul were on the call for that one last night. Uh, but things really starting to heat up. You know, week four almost over, and you can really start to see a playoff picture starting to uh, set up themselves in these. Uh, in section six. And I think another big one as well in Class C North Newfane still unbeaten at 4 0 with a 40 7 win against Lakeshore. A big game. It's a Thursday night clash against Medina. Medina, the, the crown jewel of Class C North for the past couple of years. Medina still unbeaten as well. But Newfane, Medina, you got the two quarterbacks, Nate Snow for the Panthers, Julian Woodworth for the Mustangs. That should be a big game as well. But you said there's still a lot. There's some pieces that are forming. Still a lot of football left to be played as well. Uh, but but halfway through, it's it's been a pretty exciting stretch. Well, you you mentioned Medina. They won 29 to 21 over Akron, which I think is a little closer yes. than I think most people in Mustang Lang would expect. Um, but they ultimately get the win. You mentioned that. Could be a big showdown between the Mustangs and the Panthers. And uh, we wrote about it in their magazine. Frank Wolf wrote about it. Uh, this is a new fame team that hasn't quite seen a ton of success lately. They snuck into the playoffs a couple of years ago. But now you start to see some pieces coming together for Coach Chuck Nagel. And, and you just said for Chuck Nagel, last season, New Fane finished just 2-6. and six. A lot of young players learning on the fly how to play at varsity. This year they bring a boatload of players back, including Nate Snow, Ben Dickinson at receiver, Walk, Braden Walker in the backfield. So now that they have that experience and they took those licks last year, they're ready to go. And, and you can see the early 4-0 start. 
another underreported score before we finish up here. Depew, 28 to 20 winners over Alden last week. They got the big come from behind victory over Springville. We know Lackawanna last check was uh, winning uh, by I think 28 late in the fourth quarter in that one. So it sets up next week and a week from today. Depew at Lancaster, two 4 0 squads. Uh, that is going to be a game to watch to see if Depew can take the next step. And absolutely with Lackawanna, first year head coach and Marcus Rivers taking over. Lackawanna made it to the to the stadium last year as well. And, and you said that's that could be a, another classic um, coming up next Saturday. All right, we're going to take a break. Third quarter is almost here. You're watching Monsignor Martin football on Western New York Athletics. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when... Second half about to start here at Canisius. St. Joe's will kick off to Canisius. There will be a running clock with the score at 35 to nothing. Bryce Hopkins just explained that to the crowd. If the if the score gets under 35, then it will not be a running clock. But for now, it'll be a running clock as we await the kickoff. Kimball, one of the deep men on the kickoff. Well, Kimball's done a lot of things extremely well to steal a line from Clevis Murray. Kimball is nimble, and they won't kick it anywhere near him. The kick is bounced, taken at the 20, and cutting down the sideline is looks like that was Teddy Ciancio on the return and it'll be first and ten for the Crusaders. So, so at this deficit 35 to nothing um, chances are uh, this might be Canisius' victory they would actually tie their their historic record with um, 48 wins each three ties well we have another half to go so hopefully if you're a St. Joe's person and they come back you can make shots at me all you like because <laughs> um, I said the probability though not a fact yet so Canisius first and 10 at their own 40 yard line here as we start the third quarter And there's a handoff to Kimball at the 45, at the 50, and he's brought down. Big tackle there because if they didn't get him, there's a lot of real estate to cover. A 13-yard gain for Elijah Kimball. And it looks like Kimball likes uh, real estate. <laughs> Hey, that's a really good line. I like that. <laughs> How much of it has he chewed up? Is there a statistic Whoa. on that? We're looking at for that right now. Because just add 13 to it. Because he just got 13 yards. It's in St. Joe's territory. I'm a product of public schools, not private uh, Catholic. So it's taking me a moment here. I'm not as smart as these young men. And there's the handoff. Jaden Clark. Clark on the carry, and he's got about five or six yards. And it'll be second down for the Crusaders. Jaden actually got rushing yards on his lateral in the first half. So he'll add to his total there. So second down for the Crusaders. We hope you and we hope you enjoyed the halftime show with Francis Beck and Joe Kraus. Well, Stu, I did my best to look at this statistic sheet, so I'm sorry, I just can't find it. I'm going to pass it over to, to Francis, our wonderful producer. He'll probably find that stat for us. And we'll just add 13 to it. Play action. It's a screen pass on the far side. That's Eskridge. He's got a first down, and he's inside the 40-yard line. Eskridge started the, sco it started the scoring with a great 70 some yard touchdown run back in the first quarter. That's an eight yard gain. All the way down to the St. Joe's 36. Canisius, some really good fast players on their team. And as we talk about speed, speed and more the need for more speed, 
You can see uh, Canisius has some of that in abundance. There's the handoff to Kimball, and he barrels forward. He might have another first down. Ten carries for 111 yards in the first half. That's a team total, not the individual. Ten carries, 111 yards, and they've added to it here in the third quarter. Another great run by Kimball. I love the fact how he got behind his lineman, put his arm up on his shoulder pad, and kind of let him do the steering for him. Some of the things he does as a freshman, just it's outrageous to think he is just a freshman. I don't know how to put it, but he is just a joy to watch. And there's a handoff and a short gain. Amir Hernandez. Hernandez on the carry. Putting his hand up on the pad. I guess in my colloquial way of saying it before, but really what you're doing is you're being patient. The hole isn't quite there, but you have enough to scoot through. And for a young man to show that kind of patience, and that's through the meat grinder area of the field. So kudos to him showing so much, so much uh, talent already. And the, oh my gosh, as a freshman. Some of that you just can't teach. That's it's just natural ability. It's natural ability. It's football smarts. It's good coaching. That's all on him. Zimmerman throws to the far side. It's caught and knocked out of bounds on the far side. Jaden Clark, Clark on the reception. Clark's another one. I've just down. loved his game so far. The, these intermediate, short intermediate passes, quick throws to him, quick feet. He can find daylight. He's got good hands. Another Canisius first down. This has been quite a drive for the Crusaders here to start the second half. No let up from the Crusaders. Another first down. Canisius already up by 35. And to your point earlier, they've, Canisius has had some major injuries. Uh, with those other guys on this field, or the other boys playing, they would be even even better today. Zimmerman rolls to the right. He throws. It's actually caught. Is he inbounds? What a great catch by Evan Dean. He actually stayed in bounds. How did he do that? First and goal from like the three yard line. That's a that was similar to the touchdown. Similar to the touchdown. Had both toes dressed on the line. Loved his ability. Great catch, putting those hands out there to just reach it and then f catches it, secures it, gets knocked out of bounds. It'll be first and goal for the Crusaders. And 18 will take the direct snap. Runs to the near side, into the end zone for the touchdown. Brett Pettit. The junior quarterback scores to make it 41 to nothing. Crusaders, what a great drive by Canisius. Great drive, some individual, great individual efforts, great results. Um, today it's the Canisius boys day. Yes it is. Good for them. They've worked hard, Joe's boys have worked hard, but Canisius right now is just, uh, just had the luck going for them and then just some great, great individual efforts. Now imagine this Canisius team with Nizel Lash, Dyrell Howard Dolson and Damari Yancey. Those are three really good players that are out. That was your point earlier. Yes, so three very good running backs and then you, th and, and then you can throw you know, you throw a young freshman in there too. Can you imagine how much uh, ball control Canisius could have? And everything in football works better when you can run the ball. Passing works better. Linemen feel better. Coaches have more hair <laughs> on their head. Yeah, the extra point is up and good. And it's 42 to nothing Canisius with 5.52 to play. Here in the third quarter, you're watching Monsignor Martin Football on Western New York Athletics. Hi, Deion Dawkins, Dawson Knox for Team West Tour Used Cars. With the largest selection in New York State, with thousands available. From economy cars to this outrageous Ford F-150 Raptor. Owned by a well-known celebrity type. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this my old truck? 
Are you selling my truck? Much better. Check it out. Win Josh's truck. Go to Wester.com and win your choice of Josh Allen's signed Ford F-150 or $100,000. Ride with Team Wester. You're watching another live stream production by 300 Level Media, LLC. 300 Level Media can highlight your business by incorporating commercials, live reads, and corporate logos throughout our WNY Athletics events. WNY Athletics is the premier high school sports streaming service in New York State. Covering regular season contests through the state championships and everything in between with over a million views annually. If you are interested in advertising with any of our platforms, please visit our Become a Sponsor page at WNYAthletics.com. There was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Canisius after the touchdown, so they will kick off from their own 25-yard line. George Coons and Breon Campbell Jr. are the deep men. They will bounce it up the middle, picked up by Coons at about the 32-yard line, and he's got some room to run. He's out close to midfield where he's finally brought down by the Crusaders. It'll be first and 10 George Marauders, the and they get really good field position to start another drive. Good they field position. Turn it into points. They may, but again, let's, you know, my old adage, I know I sound like a broken record. You really just have to focus in on this one play, win this play. Keep doing that for the rest of the half. The, what you do in this half are the seeds that you're really planting for. These two teams probably see each other in the playoffs. Yeah, never know it, those, those kind of games. But also for next week, for, for St. Joe's. Ball is spotted at the 50-yard line. We hope you enjoyed Francis Beck and Joe Krause in the halftime show. And first and 10 for the Marauders. Panapinto has been the workhorse running back. And he will get the handoff. And he's got about seven or eight yards. Good first down run. He'll make it second down. Interesting runs. Joe, it, it kind of looks like a stretch run going backwards where the quarterback is getting the ball moves a little bit to his right and then hands it back off to the left. But it's been very successful with Panapinto just rushing up, rushing up the gut and getting positive yardage. So second down, second down about two, maybe a little bit more than two from the Canisius 42 yard line. St. Joe's has moved the ball on a couple of drives but then turned it over more often than not. There's a handoff to Panapinto, nowhere to go. Teddy, Teddy Sancio, bless him in the backfield for a loss. Great defensive play. He shot through that gap like he came out of a cannon. You know, when you're up by this many points too, you can take a few chances off the edge with defenders, um, jumping the count. Five yards wouldn't matter that much, but yeah, just a great, great, um, uh, play off the, off the edge, just jumped that jumped that count just on the snap, boom, and there was nowhere nowhere for Panapinto to run to. Third down and about eight after the loss on the last play, and Musico rolls to the right. He throws down the far side, incomplete. Ball is a little high. No flags. The other Musico's twin brother was the intended receiver. He was calling for a flag, but no flags came out. And that'll bring up fourth down. Interesting formations on St. Joe's. Really, really packed in. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the spread, obviously. And Canisius has a size advantage on the two lines, I think. And I try to just keep them spread out. Get my receivers out a little bit more. Fourth and long for the Marauders. Here's Musica back to pass under, he's hit. And the ball comes out, they're gonna say it's an incomplete pass. His arm was going forward. And it'll be Canisius ball taking over on downs. Well, Canisius kinda, Keyshawn Dees hit him just as he threw it. Well, Keyshawn comes out with that ball and there was nothing but daylight in front of him. So from a Marauder standpoint, as bad as that uh, hit was on the throw, 
They were fortunate that that wasn't intercepted for a pick six. Well, that's two times in a row that Canisius just blasted through there, like the perennial hot knife through butter. Yes. And untouched, yes. really. Or they just made great plays. I don't know if they weren't. They didn't look touched. Put it that way. Well, they 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 overstack one side. Pressure uh, comes from knocking a lineman a little bit to the side, and then another one coming up. Uh, the defender coming right up his backside, and they're dominating on both sides of the line right now. Amir Hernandez with about a four-yard gain there for the Crusaders. And now Kimball comes Second back into six. the game. Keep your eye on Elijah Kimball, a freshman. 5'11", 180 pounds, that's what he's listed at. Got great speed, great agility, great moves, just a fantastic looking athlete. Yep, just a young man who is going to dominate the high school football scene uh, for the next, well, for the rest of this year and for the following three. I'm going to find out from Bryce Hopkins if he's a basketball guy too or if he's just a football guy because he's certainly athletic enough to do whatever he wants. And that time he's thrown down for no gain. Just as we're talking about him, nice play there by Dylan Capone, I believe, number 49 on the tackle. And, you know, we can, you know, Nothing we can give those um, those positive statements about players. Other side will make the play. Capone made a very nice play, knife through, um, and made a tackle. So takes nothing nothing away from what we're saying. We're watching a young man who's really going to be a dynamite dynamite player in Kimball. I would say he already is. I'd say he already is. But <laughs> can you imagine? No. Another <laughs> year in a program for a year more. And there's a handoff to Hunter Jancy, and he barrels forward for a first down. The Hunter big man the barrels forward. He's 6'1", 225 pounds, and a nine-yard gain and a first, first down foul. for Canisius. So it now is. it's just kind of like the physical domination part. Yes. You know, the game's over, but we're going to show you that we're still physically dominant. And, yes, they are, and they are. I was going to say, I don't want to say it's Kimball's coming out party, but this is the first time he's played against local talent right here in western new york because i think they've been on the road for all three and that will bring the third quarter to a close after three quarters it's canisius 42 st joe's nothing you're watching the monsignor martin association on western new york athletics Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. For an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs, more information about our Buffalo office is available at logisticsplus.com slash buffalo. Stay up to date on the latest scores across Western New York by visiting wnyathletics.com and use our interactive scoreboard for the latest across Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Association events. Western New York High School football is on WBFO, your NPR station. Here. Fourth quarter about to get underway. And Zimmerman goes back to pass. He throws. It's caught by Clark, who spins away from one tackler, gets away from another, and I believe he went out of bounds. Jaden Clark, and that's another Canisius first down. He's inside the 30-yard line. A 19-yard gain. Down to the St. Joe's 23-yard line. Well, Stuart, I was looking at past scores for both teams who've jumped up into some big, big victories. And this is going, this is going to go down in history as one of those games that Canisius alum in 10 years are going to bring up at a social event with their brethren, St. Joe's alum. And they'll have to be, um, they'll have to have the upper hand in this at that, at that time. Well, one of the Canisius linemen is down on the turf. Hopefully he's all right. Stoppage for injury timing. And 
We're going to take a quick break. 11.04 to play, fourth quarter, Canisius 42, St. Joe's nothing. You're watching Monsignor Martin Association football on Western New York Athletics. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Well, the Canisius lineman is still down on the turf. Elijah Kimball just walked out of bounds. I'm thinking that maybe he saw his teammate was hurt and wanted to get that play over. This one, by the way, if you're just joining us, has been all Canisius, 42 to nothing. Uh, a couple of years ago, Canisius beat St. Joe's on this very field, 66 to nothing. And here in the third quarter at halftime, the officials decided there would be a running clock as long as the lead was not less than 35 points, which is why the third quarter went by so quickly. And what's going on here, Francis? You're pointing at something. Well, we're watching Kimball uh, very gingerly walking back. All right, so there's a lineman down, Kimball walking gingerly back toward the bench. Yeah, he, something's not right with him. And we're going to take another break. 42 to nothing, Canisius over St. Joe's. You're watching Monsignor Martin football on Western New York Athletics. Hi, Deion Dawkins, Dawson Knox for Team West Her Used Cars. With the largest selection in New York State, with thousands available. From economy cars to this outrageous Ford F-150 Raptor. Owned by a well-known celebrity type. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this my old truck? Are you selling my truck? Much better. Check it out. Win Josh's truck. Go to Wester.com and win your choice of Josh Allen's signed Ford F-150 or $100,000. Ride with Team West Her. You're watching another live stream production by 300 Level Media, LLC. 300 Level Media can highlight your business by incorporating commercials, live reads, and corporate logos throughout our WNY Athletics events. WNY Athletics is the premier high school sports streaming service in New York State. Covering regular season contests through the state championships and everything in between with over a million views annually. If you are interested in advertising with any of our platforms, please visit our Become a Sponsor page at WNYAthletics.com. Welcome back. We have some scoring updates here for you across Western New York. Third quarter, Gowanda 28-7 over Cardinal O'Hara. End of the third quarter, Tonawanda 22-16 over Maritime Tapestry. We have a final from the Southern Tier, CSP 44-21 winners over Fal uh, Fal Falconer, Cataraugus, Little Valley, Maple Grove. Uh, some other scores around. We know to uh, Lackawanna, 
uh, were big winners. Last check was 28 to nothing in that one. Still have an injury here on the field. Looks like the lineman, yep, is now up, so I'll give it back to uh, Stu and Paul. Thank you, Francis. That is uh, 75, George Wiley the fifth who is now up and slowly walking toward the sideline. Elijah Kimball is also on the sideline, standing behind the Crusaders bench. They hopefully both are okay, and if desired, are able to return to the game. This one, as we mentioned, all Canisius. Started with Jaden Clark returning a punt for a touchdown, great return. Unfortunately, it was called back by two or three penalty flags, and then Jack Eskridge had a 70 yard plus run for a touchdown, and here we go, second down for the Crusaders. Zimmerman hands it off, and coming to the near side, heading toward the end zone, and into the end zone for the touchdown. Amir Hernandez gets the touchdown, and that'll make it 48 to nothing. Forty-eight to nothing now. Well, Amir Hernandez around the corner saw daylight. He also must have a nice second gear. Just really, just really Can turned it up. Yeah, went into the touchdown. went into the end zone almost untouched. And Canisius just continuing to dominate. We're watching Kimball uh, on the sideline. He's walking much better now. I noticed he was having some type of energy drink. So. I'm assuming he just had a little bit of a, a cramp there, and he's doing his best quarterback uh, imitation now <laughs> with a, a little little brother down there maybe or just a young boy on you know, the JV or whatever, whoever he's throwing it to, but he's smiling and he's moving around pretty good. Yeah, the extra point is good to make it 49 to nothing. I was not expecting this game to be quite so lopsided. And then especially with Canisius, Canisius missing those three players, but boy, oh boy, they've got some tremendous talent. They've got talent, they've got a big offensive line, big defensive lines. You know, I was thinking of um, earlier today of the great John Madden, because we're in Washington, the Bills are in Washington tomorrow, and John named those, uh, the Washington, line the hogs and how he would talk about how the big boys just always hit and all that well i'm watching it today and i'm sitting there going yeah there's a reason that guy's in the hall of, or you know he's in the hall of fame uh it was a reason he was a great coach he he understood football mechanics and football begins on that line of scrimmage can you protect your quarterback can you open up holes can you stop the other team from doing that and Canisius today, it's been just dominant. Lokia to kick off for the Crusaders. Lokia is set to kick off once again for Canisius. By the way, he's been perfect on all seven touchdowns. Seven extra points, seven for seven. Yep, he's got a nice leg. It's a good day for anybody. He will kick off. And they will bounce this one. It'll be picked up at the 15 yard line by Campbell. He's got some room to run and he's brought down just beyond the 35 yard line. Good tackle there, just when it looked like he was about to break into space, somebody got him and prevented that. And it'll be first and 10 for the Marauders. Nice tackle by number 54, Aiden Mecca. Um, came out of nowhere, right? We th I thought, oh, maybe, oh, nope, there it goes. That's exactly what I thought, hey, well, they, you know, maybe. Maybe, right? Well, we're under eight minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. What's well, been a long afternoon for St. Joe's. Got to give it to special teams players too. Yes, always, you know, right? Just they did put their put their life in their own hands doing that. <laughs> They're running opposite directions so fast at each other. Let's see what St. Joe's can do here. They'll hand it off to Panapinto and. Maybe a yard or two. Boy, those are tough yards to come by. Got a yard or two and paid the price. Ciencio on the tackle. We'll call that a one-yard gain. Second and nine for the Marauders. Watching the St. Joe side. 
boys still seem very intent in watching, cheering their, you know, the, the guys on the field on, watching the coach. They know that there's going to be another day. Here's the handoff to Panapinto and gets two or three more hard yards. And then I was thinking of Canisius, and you had said you had seen um, the Benedictine school yes. play this year so far up here, and that's where Canisius is traveling next week. And well, that'll be a fun game. I mean, Benedictine was good. They beat St. Francis in St. Francis. They have a lot of speed on that team. And they, when they beat St. Francis, they, they went into St. Francis. They, were, they came into that game on a 13-game losing streak. Wow. And if you look at the history of that program, they had a great championship pedigree, and then they fell on some hard times, and they're trying to turn it around. I don't know what they've done since then, but there's a lot of speed on that team. Now here's Musica under pressure. He throws incomplete out of bounds. Oh, boy. Incomplete. Yeah, that one, the Keep defensive on lineman, Kevon Walker, pressure. really got after him there. Fourth and down bring and up the fourth down and seven for the Marauders. Well, for for Canisius for next week, this is a good game, a feel-good game. Um, they're going to go down in Cleveland and probably put on a great show. They themselves have very, very, very good speed on this team. So that might be the equalizer. That'd be a fun game. I'd like to watch that game. Maybe we'll talk Francis into taking a trip to Cleveland and doing that game. Doing a road show. Yeah, there you go. We'll bring Francis and Joe on at halftime. A uh, quick shout out to Joe's dad, Mark Krause. There's a high snap over the punter's head. He'll pick it up and run with it. He gets blasted as he kicks it, and the ball's loose on the ground. A flag flies, and we'll see how they call that. We uh, we got a little bit of a scrim, a, a little fight out at the 42-yard line, and cooler heads prevail there. The punter, I believe that was Nolan Klein, number 10, got blasted. I didn't see who hit him. A little bit of a high snap. He was able to catch it and tried to get the kick away, but he couldn't. And then out near midfield, there was a little bit of a skirmish, and a flag flew there too. So a couple of different flags, one at the 21-yard line and one at about the 43-yard line, and we'll see how they sort this out. 21-yard line maybe running into the punter because the punt did get off. Penalty call. Okay, that's not, fair. Not sure. Because once that was a high snap and he started to run with it, isn't he fair game? I, yes. I, oh, there you go. Good call. Roughing the punter. Roughing the punter, but that I think really I, it, we could look on uh, the replay. I don't know if he hit him a little high. Maybe it was it helmet to helmet. Because I thought the same thing as you. Once that ball uh, snap picked it up, it's almost fair game then. But, but maybe protection of the player. So there were also was another penalty, a big one, on Canisius. So you got roughing the punter, and I think that was a personal foul on Canisius. So, so it takes the ball for St. Joe's all the way down to the Canisius 30-yard line. So it's 30 yards of penalty, and uh, Coach, uh, Coach K's out there going, um, wait a minute, what happened? <laughs> we're going to take a break. 5.07 to play, fourth quarter. Canisius 49, St. Joe's nothing. You're watching Monsignor Martin Football on Western New York Athletics. Hi, Deion Dawkins, Dawson Knox for Team West Star Used Cars. With the largest selection in New York State, with thousands available. From economy cars to this outrageous Ford F-150 Raptor. Owned by a well-known celebrity type. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this my old truck? Are you selling my truck? Much better. Check it out. Win Josh's truck. Go to Wester.com and win your choice of Josh Allen's signed Ford F-150 or $100,000. Ride with Team Wester. So here's St. Joe's with a first and 10 at the Canisius 30-yard line after the penalties. As we wait for Bob Gagliardi to Blow the whistle, wind the arm, and get him going again. And there is the whistle. And we're ready to go. First and 10 for St. Joe's. Zimmerman hands it off to Panapinto. Not a lot of room to run. Maybe, well, actually, it's pretty good four yards. Panapinto has had a really good game, unfortunately. 
it, it'll be lost in the in the score. He's a really solid run, running back. That's a three-yard gain, and he's got a lot of tough yards. He's got today. a lot of tough yards. I really have enjoyed watching him play. Um, the score seems to be irrelevant to him. <laughs> That's a great way of putting you it. You know, like he's just going to run hard every time, give everything he has. And, you know, for a football player, and especially one who's down right now, it's 49 to nothing. He's just going to go out there and do his thing. He's enjoying it. He's going back to pass. He's got time. He throws to the far side. Incomplete. Intended for his brother. Yeah, incomplete. Again, once again, he's under pressure. Big time pressure. Had to get rid of the ball. So it's an incomplete pass, and that'll bring up third down. And really, that's the quarterback's kryptonite from any level that you're watching in any status of a player uh, from Patrick Mahomes down to uh, Johnny Smith, who's six. <laughs> they just want to get rid of that ball. You don't want to get hit. Tell that to a guy who wears number 17 for the Bills. We don't like seeing him getting hit, do we? No. <laughs> Third down. You go back to pass under pressure one more time. He gets it away. Incomplete. There's a flag on the play. And I think they're going to call pass interference on Wilkinson from Canisius. One of the fans didn't like it. He yelled out Little League, but no, that was clearly a penalty on that one. Once again, Muchica under great pressure. Roll to the right and through it. And you know, I'm not sure if it was catchable or it would be a holding call against holding Canisius. On the defense. Hmm. It's a 10-yard penalty. Is it? First down Again, you know, I, I'm thinking about from the official standpoint. They're close. They see a lot more. They see that little tug on the jersey that we're just too far away to see. They're trying to keep um, safety. When I get these boys, I always used to say with my kids in sports, I want them in math class tomorrow. <laughs> That's really one of the officials' jobs. Make sure these young men go to school Monday and get into math class. And there's the handoff to Panapinto, and there's no room to run at all. And, you know, from a pride standpoint, Canisius wants to have that shutout. Yes, they do. And from a pride standpoint, St. Joe's wants to, you know, muddy the waters and, and get some points on the board to say, yeah, they didn't, they didn't shut us out. And, so, and something positive to build on for next week. Yes. So it's second and 10 from the 17-yard line. We're coming up on the two-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. St. Joe's would like nothing better than to put one in the end zone here. And Muchico were coming to the near side. I believe that was Panapinto on the carry. And he's pretty close to the first down. Another good run. And I'm assuming Panapinto is around 100. Plus. I would think so. And you know what? They've all been tough, hard, and hard fought for yards. He's a Kenmore kid, probably. We're all that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue with you. No. I mean, I could, but oh, when you're <laughs> driving, I don't feel like walking <laughs> home. Everybody's been waiting. We have a well, put it this way. I know he has Kemmer lineage, probably. <laughs> okay. So third down and six after the four-yard gain. Uchika back to pass. He throws to Panapinto, who goes straight up the middle, spins, dives, touchdown. Great catch and run by Panapinto to make it a 42 to six game late in the fourth quarter. And everything we've been saying about Panapinto, that was the perfect example of it. Nice reception, still had to get by three guys. He saw that end zone. He was getting tackled by two, he still ran through them, so good for him. Good for St. Joe's. He would not be denied. And they'll try to make it 42 to seven here, so kick is up and good. And it's 42 to seven. Mateo Molinaro kicks the extra point. We'll keep it right here for the final 
one minute and two seconds of the fourth quarter. And that a really nice drive by St. Joe's. I really? mean, it got some help with the penalties, but they took advantage of it. Yep. You know, sometimes it's, you need a little help from your friends. That's right. Okay, another Beatles reference. <laughs> I'm not really good at Beatles stuff. So, <laughs> so. One of the guys I used to work with is an expert. And his name is Andy DeSantis. He used to be the chief photographer at WGRZ-TV. Well, anyway, I'm, go ahead. I'm, make far, I'm, I'm far from an expert, but, you know, we're trying to uh, throw a little cult culture in here. Might not be highbrow culture, <laughs> but it is culture. Okay, that's fair. Do you know you can, uh, on WBBZ-TV, uh, which is 505 on the Verizon that I have. You can watch the Ed Sullivan Show every Sunday night at 10 o'clock. And do you know who the special guests were about a week or so ago? Don't tell me, the Beatles. Yes, the Beatles, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a Beatles fan, you know. I, I didn't want to call you. Not Beatles, o'clock at night. I, it was 10 o'clock at night. I wasn't going to call you and tell you to turn that on. Anyway, uh, your reference. Go ahead. So, here. You wonder, probably an onside kick, right? Yeah, why not? Right, you should. And then if Canisius gets it, I'm assuming victory formation. If Joe's gets this uh, onside. There's the onside kick. Good call. Picked up by one of the up men, and he'll just fall on it. And then he'll be falling on Jack Dugan. Duggan, excuse me, falling on the Canisius player. Oh, so happy to see uh, Kimball's out there. Yes, that but he came off the field. His his leg was straighter than a board. I thought, cramping and uh, you know they have so many good drinks now to get those electrolytes. And you know we have to have a doctor explain it because you know I'm not a doctor, but somehow the body works. He was depleted. He got some drinks, and he's at least out there. And I'm assuming it's going to be victory formation. Obviously, I thought you were a doctor of beatology. Beetleology. Beetleology. Yeah, that's a new one, right? Doctor of Beetleology. <laughs> want to thank everybody today. Our photographers, BJ Stack and Joe Turry. Francis Beck, our producer. Joe Krause, part of the halftime show. Joe, by the way, doing a great job writing for the Niagara Gazette. I hope you read his stuff. Please do. Joe's an outstanding young man. I was so happy to hear when he's always talked about being a writer. and He got that opportunity. He's doing a great job for them. You can also see his stuff on the Western New York Athletics homepage. Check out our new webpage for Western New York Athletics. Plenty more games coming your way next week. And I'm sure Francis will tell us when we're doing volleyball and soccer and maybe even some field hockey too. And we've got a new quarterback, and down he goes. That's Teddy Ciancio. Excuse me, that was Brad, Brett Pettit. Excuse me, number 18. I thought it was number 10. And as I've told you before, don't bet on anything I say because they came out instead of uh, victory formation. They were in one more play, a little scuffle at the end. And but really, the clock's about to run out, and... Canisius will go home, and as I usually say, when the Bills win, tonight they eat well. <laughs> well, that'll do it for this one. Canisius wins big, 49-7. to Once again, I want to thank everybody. We'll thank our host, Canisius High School here, Bryce Hopkins and Jim Morrow. I want to thank B.J. Stack and Joe Turry, our photographer, Francis Beck, and Joe Kraus for the halftime entertainment. Thank you to Paul Catrona. My name is Stu Boyer. Once again, the final score, Canisius 49, St. Joe's 7. Thank all of you for watching, and have a good night, everybody.